Uh, this is apropos of uh, some part of, the, uh, of America's history. In 1776, the state of Pennsylvania was putting together their constitution. Article 16, this is from Wealth and Democracy, Kevin Phillips, brilliant book. Uh, Article 16 of the Pennsylvania Bill of Rights, quote, an enormous proportion of property vested in a few individuals is dangerous to the rights and destructive of the common happiness of mankind, and therefore every free state hath a right by its laws to discourage the possession of such property. Thomas Jefferson himself, writing to Samuel Kercheval in 1816, said those seeking profits where they give them total freedom would not be the ones to trust to keep government pure and our rights secure. Indeed, it has always been those seeking wealth who are the source of corruption in government. No other depositories of power have ever yet been found which did not end in converting to their own profit the earnings of those committed to their charge. And in fact, he's, he, he went on, if an overgrown wealth of an individual be deemed dangerous to the state, the best corrective is the law of equal inheritance to all in equal degree. Hmm. Are billionaires dangerous to our democracy? On the line with me is Diana Birchhol, Birchgott Roth, a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute and former chief economist with the U.S. Department of Labor. Manhattan-Institute.org is the website. Diane, uh, Diana, welcome back to the program. Great to be with you. Thank you. So... I, you know, I'm I'm fine with somebody having, and we're talking here wealth, not income. Uh, you know what they own. I'm fine with somebody having a million or a hundred million or five hundred million or nine hundred million or even nine hundred ninety nine million dollars, even though it's inconceivable that anybody could spend that much money personally. And we're talking personal wealth here, not corporate wealth well, in their uh, life. Well, I mean, um, Bill Gates seems to do a pretty good job. Well, he's he not spending it though. He, he set up a foundation in order to. Uh, give it out. He's giving out a lot to health. He's giving out a lot to education. He's somebody who is really uh, making people better off, I think. So you're making the argument for aristocracy. I mean, that was the argument that traditionally was made in Europe for having kings and queens was that they endowed the arts, they endowed the museums, the, they, they built the cathedrals, uh, therefore we need them. I think what you mean is patronage. Aristocracy is when wealth goes from one generation to another. Well, the patronage is a dimension Bill of Gates. aristocracy. Bill Gates was the first one in his family uh, who made that kind of money. But if he... Patronage is, I think, the word you're looking for. You're, you're, you're absolutely right. And if there is not a substantial Paris Hilton tax on him when he dies, then the next generation is going to be aristocracy. Uh, that's right, yes, exactly. And for, you know, a fair number of billionaires in America, it's already aristocracy. So, uh, again, I mean, aren't you making the argument for the old-fashioned, you know, feudal or semi-feudal European-style aristocracy or, or patronage system? Well, coming from Europe, I can really see the difference because uh, there, there are dukes and duchesses and counts. They have inherited land. Uh, they were given it by uh, the uh, king. They didn't earn it themselves. Here we have people who earn their money, who perhaps pass it on. But, you know, there's a saying, from rags to riches and back again in three generations, you often find people who inherit uh, wealth and who then don't uh, use it properly. I think the but Rockefeller family might disagree with you. <laughs> it's even even uh, more important than that, I think it's important that people uh, have the right to earn what they earn. They've earned it legally. They have a right to do with it as they want, to pass it on to other generations. You find that new millionaires and billionaires uh, come up, like Bill Gates and Eric Schmidt of Google. Why is that? Because they have a good idea, and people who have a good idea no, they don't. can sell it to the public. That's they not the case. The Bill, Bill, first of all, Bill Gates didn't have a good idea. He bought that. He, he bought uh, the original operating system from, from a fellow who had developed it. He was a good marketer. Yeah, but he and, knew and, how to do it. And then secondly, uh, I, I, he's a welfare queen. Uh, he knew queen. to buy it. Uh, he's he a total to welfare queen. Investment. And he worked very hard by, he got up as a teenager in the middle of the night, went to the computer labs at the University of Washington, went back to bed. Then his mother was wondering why it was always so hard to wake him up in the morning. He worked very hard. The same with Steve Jobs. And Steve Jobs had the idea. He didn't invent the technology. The technology came from abroad. But he knew that if you put this technology in this little device that was a bit bigger than a credit card, people would want to walk around carrying all their music well, on. Well, and the, the original operating system uh, that, that, that Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak used when, for the Apple computer had, had originally actually been developed, I believe it was by Hewlett-Packard. It was the, the old star operating system. But in any case, my, 
But again, I, I would say that what you're saying is not actually the case. Bill Gates is a welfare queen, as is Steve Jobs, or was Steve Jobs. These guys, without he's a, uh, without he's a, uh, the he's a, ex- what? He's a welfare queen. Yes, absolutely. So. They are they are subsidized by by government fiat. And this was this was the argument that Jefferson made strongly, repeatedly, and why for the first hundred years, the first century of America, we did not have patent laws that extended more than more than a dozen years or so. Was that if our patent laws extended more than three years, and, and copyright laws for that matter, that that but in particular patent laws, that what would happen was innovation would stop and fortunes would start to accumulate in the hands of the first people who got into a marketplace, and they would create basically. You know, oligarchies, and that's exactly what Bill Gates did with with Microsoft. Well, there are many technologies that rise and fall, many big stores that are popular one time, and then five or ten years later, they're not popular at all. Look at uh, everyone was buying IBM computers at one point. Now IBM is in a different business. So you have to work pretty hard to keep even as long as there's freedom of entry. Very important that there's freedom of entry, that people have the right to come up with their new ideas, and they also have the right to get rich. But for them, freedom of entry. And they have the right to spend their money on whatever. No, wait a minute. I'm, sa- I'm saying it's not their money. I'm saying that Bill Gates got his wealth by being a welfare queen, by, by depending upon the state defending a copyright or a patent that is a, a total abstraction and that was extended as much as it is extended and as, and as heavily as it's extended, largely by lobbying from companies like Microsoft. You're just jealous. Why didn't you think of that idea? I am. You're just sorry you didn't think the, of the, the idea, I, and you couldn't become a welfare well, queen. Well, you know, maybe it you're doing some some intense projection here, Diana. I am not at all jealous it. of Bill Gates. <laughs> it's, you know, but you know, you're entitled to your opinion. I, as I said, I have no problem with somebody show, having so up to I, a billion dollars in wealth. But it really seems to me that after a billion dollars, we've reached that point that that Jefferson talked about where it becomes destructive to democracy. I disagree. As long as there's freedom of entry and other people can come and earn those amounts of money, but there isn't. then that's fine. But there isn't. America, you know, pre-Reagan, America was a country filled with small businesses. Every, small, every town's downtown was small, locally owned businesses. Every mall was small, locally owned businesses. Look, people have medium-sized ideas businesses. now. Look at Mark Reagan Zuckerberg stopped enforcing the Sherman Antitrust Act, and that all went away. Look at, uh, look at Mark Zuckerberg with Facebook. He had an idea. He he's a welfare uh, queen. marketed the idea, and now he's a billionaire, too. He patented and copyrighted it. He's a welfare queen. He's using federal law to, to, to prevent other people from competing. You're with. just jealous. Why don't you do the same and be a billionaire, too? I, I, this is not about me. This is about what's best for the republic. I don't think it would be best for me to do it either, Diane. But I don't think you could do it either. Well, you may well be right, but I'm, you know, I don't think it would be right. I mean, that's one of the things that I wouldn't do. Anyhow, Diana, Diana uh, uh, Furchgott Roth uh, with the Manhattan Institute. Thank you, Diana. Great to be with you.